hit, 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 hit. Wow, I cannot believe it's January 9th already. A lot of things have happened uh, since our last video. First of all, the Buffalo Bills got kicked out of the playoffs. It was the most heartbreaking loss. Oh my God, it was just, it was terrible. It's amazing. I'm 33 years old and I've only seen my team in the playoffs two times. One was two years ago and then this time. So watching that game was an absolute emotional roller coaster. I couldn't take it. It was like, I was watching Good Morning Football and they said, I've never tried, he's like, I've never tried drugs before, but if I did, it would be like watching that Buffalo Bills game. It was just absolutely insane. All right, enough with sports, enough with all of that stuff. It's great to be back with you. Um, it's great to be making this video right now. It's um, Thursday around eight o'clock at night, you know, got home from work, had something to eat and just good to be talking to all of my other people out there that are into power walls and good to get my mind off of work and those other things. So this is almost like a little therapy session because it's been a while and it's great to be back making videos and I have my mind is on so many videos to make and like these different ideas and the ones I want to do but I just got to get one video out there and it's just uh, it's like eating an elephant how do you do it one bite at a time so this video is to get me back in the game and just give you guys some updates about my Powerwall system how it's doing in the winter time it's a lot different than it was in October, November, September, July, April. It is way different and it's definitely good to know about it. Like it's, it is not performing like it was earlier in the year and that's obviously known. Like we, we, we knew that when we were designing the system but experiencing it, living it, sensing it, it's, uh, it's different and I'll share some of that with you. Also, this is pretty cool. This has been, uh, on our uh, shelf for a while now and uh, just got to open it and it's uh, it's pretty cool. This is actually our uh, Tesla wound up sending this to us. This is our Tesla certified installer um, plaque. They sent this over to us just as Tesla certified installer, New York State Solar Farm and uh, 2019 and 2020. So. This is pretty cool. Thank you, Tesla, for sending this out. Um, it's just, uh, if you're gonna get a Tesla Powerwall from someone, make sure your installer has, is certified with Tesla and definitely gonna hang this on the wall at our office. I gotta get this up there. That's, uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Definitely the hard work is paying off in understanding these systems and uh, getting to share that knowledge with all of our friends, family, and our, our customers. So something, uh, I'll just jump over to the split screen so you could see what I'm looking at on my iPad. And I thought I'd just take you through, take you through a day, take you through today so you could see how it's working and what it's looking like in the winter time. Today is January, let me go to today. Today is, what day is today? Today is January 9th and I was stuck on the 6th for a second. So let me go to the right day today. So I'll shut the uh, these other things off, the home, the power wall, the grid. And today was a great day. Today is pretty crazy. We got to 36 kW. We have not been hitting 36 kW production um, in a little bit. So you could see that the system woke up at 730 when we were doing our videos early in the year. Earlier in the year in September, we we're waking up a lot earlier than that obviously but we're in the winter time so 7 30 wake up call for the solar our peak was at 10 20 a.m and we hit a 7 kw pick peak keep in mind i have 36 solar panels on the roof so it's a lot bigger system than 7 kw we're actually around 11 kw but it's it's winter time so you can see we're doing good all the way up till around 12 50 and we have an east facing roof. So the sun is setting on the west side. So you can see my production drops off pretty significantly around 1.30 and it plummets back down and our system is off at 4.10. So the system is off at 4.10. 
you could see our power walls. We were charging them. Where do we have here? I mean, we were we were charging those power walls all day long up until uh, two o'clock, and then we started to use that power. Today's the first day that we hit full charge on our batteries to 100% in the past, I would say month. I mean, we really haven't been getting a full charge on the power walls. They've been at like 50 to 60%, 40%, just because the weather has been really bad. We had an ice storm and the ice was just covering the panels for over a week straight. And I'll show you here, um, this is where we're at currently. We currently have, it's loading. Um, I think we're at like 78 to 80%. It's updating still. The last I checked on it, it was 83% is what the power walls were at. So it's, uh, it's still updating here, but that's what we were at. And something that I also noticed is there was a storm coming in. And the storm was coming in and I knew it was coming. And it was supposed to be a complete whiteout with this storm. It was supposed to be a nor'easter that we were getting last month. So when I saw the nor'easter was coming and I saw that we were gonna have a good day of weather, Tesla has this, um, if you look in here, if you go under customize, they have this storm watch setting. So what storm watch is, it says, um, power wall detects incoming storms and fully charges to provide backup power after the storm, um, provide backup power. After the storm, your system will return to its previous settings. So Stormwatch senses when a storm is coming, it shuts the power walls from, uh, from the home using any of the battery power, and it has the solar fill the batteries to full capacity, and then it leaves the power walls in a reserve state so you could hold them uh, for in case of an emergency that you lose power from the grid. But what I was noticing is that obviously the weather was really bad and the next day was gonna be in worse weather and it didn't click into storm watch mode yet. So what I did is I actually um, went here and I put the reserve for power outages to 100%. So I clicked this all the way up to 100. Um, and what I did is when I did that, I held, um, charge at 100 until the storm passed over. So what it did is it wouldn't let anything discharge out. It was still in Stormwatch mode, but Stormwatch didn't kick in yet because it didn't get the sign from the weather station. So I kept it at 100 and I was good for those three days. And all I did is have the batteries on reserve in case we did lose power. So we we're good to go. Now what I'm doing now for the winter time, because the battery is not getting charged to full capacity every night, Usually I keep the reserve for power outages at, um, at 5%. But this time of the year, because of the winter and the storms that we're having, I'm keeping the reserve power outages at 35%. This way, if we do get a storm and it hits, I know I have enough power to get me through the night. Most likely if we lose power in our location, um, substation is close by, I'm in the town of Newburgh, so we're gonna get power fairly quickly. So I know at 35% I'm pretty good. I could go over that if I know it's gonna be a really, if, if something is coming up, but for the winter time and my settings, that's what I'm moving to. So that's something I'm also guiding customers on is, hey, in the summertime, keep it at five, and then in the winter time when that shifts, keep it at 35% just so you have that buffer in there of security. And that's something I also noticed with the power wall is in the summertime, I was using this, like we were fully self-powered with power wall and solar. And now this time of the year, I'm relying on all of the credits that I produce during the summertime. So our solar system produced way more than we used in the summer. And these are the times of the year that I'm using all of that power that I banked with the utility company. So we did our 30 day grid challenge. For those 30 days, I was obviously off the grid. I didn't bank any power during that time. But before that and after that challenge, we did bank a lot of power. So I think I have a couple thousand kilowatt hours saved up with um, Central Hudson 
and when I use, when I'm drawing from the grid, I'm not getting charged for any of that power because of net metering. And this is also something I wanted to show you guys. Um, I switched over to heat pumps this year. So we're heating the entire house with the electric heat pumps and our definitely our usage went up throughout the, um, went up this year over year, last year, obviously, because we were using oil last year and thankfully we're not using oil anymore. And that's one of the benefits of solar and heat pumps. So right now, if you look, I'll, um, I'll show you what the house has been using and this is it. So you can see the heat pumps are running all night long. Uh, you have different spikes in there at different times, but this is, it runs, our heaviest usage on electric is up until 8 a.m. all throughout the night because the heat pumps are running, keeping the house warm. And then when we leave the house with temperature drops and you know, when we get home, the temperature goes up back to around 72 to 74 degrees and heats the house back up. So it's good to see the fluctuation of how those heat pumps work and the draw on uh, your power usage in using them. The heat that's coming from those heat pumps is absolutely unbelievable. We had baseboard heating before and it is so different. It's the most comfortable heat that I've ever felt. It's really, really beautiful. And if you're considering going with heat pumps and you have any questions, please reach out. Um, it's not what we do, but I can tell you my experience in going with it has been, it's a game changer for sure. If you could do solar, the heat pumps, an electric car, um, have, uh, you know, insulating your house, energy efficiency, those, those things are just game changers when it comes to, to renewable energy and living an efficient lifestyle. So, all right, I'm signing out. There's other videos that I promised you guys, which is why the lights were flickering with Tesla. Believe it or not, they're still working on getting me an answer. I reached out to their engineering team they're still working on it. They haven't given me an answer. They haven't forgotten about me, but they, they're really looking into it and analyzing the data. Also the sense monitoring system, that's awesome. Um, definitely have to do a video on that. I talked to one of our, our customers from last year that wants that and he's, uh, he's looking forward to getting that installed on his house. And also uh, one of our someone saw these videos and walked into our office and was inquiring about solar and what he could do on his house. And he was looking to buy the panel. So Vlad, thanks for stopping in the office. It was good chatting with you. Um, and if you have any more questions on, on solar, definitely reach out, but signing out. If you could like this video, if it was helpful and uh, subscribe to the channel, please share it with uh, your friends and family who else is looking into solar or wants uh, more information on it. But, we're hoping to get into a groove of more videos and not just more videos, but videos that are helpful. And my mind and my thought process is simple. How do I make all of this technology that I use that's complicated to design and install simple and explaining it and make it just show you how it works in the simplest way. Signing out 2020, the year of clarity. Here we go, a lot of solar power for all of us. Have a great night.